Surely God is in this place. Help me notice. Thanks for joining me, Sharon Ballantyne, for this seventh Sunday of Easter, May 24th, 2020. Worship at our virtual table from my kitchen table. Wherever you are, whoever you are, there is room for all. Our candle has been lit, and I invite you to light a candle or turn on a light source or just hold your awareness of Christ's presence within you. Welcoming, sustaining, eternal God, gather us in, ground us in you. God finds us where we are. Enduring presence, our goal and guide, Christ light and love shine in us, through us, into our neighborhoods and communities, and through all creation. We pray for peace and hope in our world. We acknowledge, honor, and respect this land and the Anishinaabe Mississauga peoples with whom Treaty 20, the Williams Treaty, was signed on the lands where I am. And we acknowledge also and give thanks for the lands and people of treaties and unceded territories of all who are vi virtually gathering. It is up to all of us to live into truth, respect, and reconciliation with all our relations. As you settle more deeply into this time of worship, I invite you to get comfortable where you are, center and ground yourself, sensing God's presence, grounded with the earth beneath you, opening yourself to God, praying in whatever way is most comfortable to you. As you open yourself to the sacred, the holy, the divine, as we prepare to take a deep breath, we allow ourselves to become more aware, more grounded. We breathe it in together and release it into silence. Let's breathe it in and let it out into silence. Holy mystery. We long to know you better and to serve you. Our spiritual longings bring us to you. Open us, liberating God to what is around us and help us to experiencing you. Honor you with all that we are and all that we do. We gather not because we hope to summon you somehow, but because you have awakened us to your splendorous presence within, around and beyond us. Stir us and renew and energize us to sow seeds of kindness, care, compassion, and generosity. Loving, joy-filled spirit, Move through your church and through each one of us, inspiring us to live boldly, love loudly, and serve faithfully. Standing in your light, hearts broken open, acknowledging our humanness, seeking transformation, savoring your holy presence. We pray. In Christ's holy name, amen. We look to our scriptures. As the farewell discourse comes to a close, Jesus is offering a prayer for his beloved disciples. Not receiving the disciples as clueless and confused, people who did not get it, but as people who are precious and belonging to God being seen and received as God does. I am reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11, from Eugene Peterson's The Message. Jesus said these things. Then, raising his eyes in prayer, he said, Father, 
its time. Display the bright splendor of your sun so the sun in turn may show your bright splendor. You put him in charge of everything human so he might give real and eternal life to all in his charge. And this is the real and eternal life, that they know you, the one and only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. And now, Father, glorify me with your very own splendor, the very splendor I had in your presence before there was a world. I spelled out your character in detail. To the men and women you gave me, they were yours in the first place. Then you gave them to me, and they have now done what you said. They know now, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that everything you gave me is firsthand from you. For the message you gave me, I gave them. And they took it and were convinced that I came from you. They believed that you sent me. I prayed for them. I am not praying for the God rejecting world but for those you gave me, for they are yours by right. Everything mine is yours and yours mine, and my life is on display in them. For I am no longer going to be visible in the world. They will continue in the world. While I return to you, Holy Father, guard them as they pursue this life that you conferred as a gift through me so they can be one heart and mind as we are one heart and one mind the gospel of the lord praise to you o christ let us pray may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be open and acceptable to you O oh God, our strength and redeemer, open us to respond to you. In Jesus' name, amen. One heart and one mind for me describes God moments, the liminal moment in which calm overcomes storm, peace defeats chaos, joy outwits pain, love overwhelms hurt, and hope indwells. It may be captured for a fleeting moment. It may hold us in Kairos time in such a way that we are not even aware of Kronos time, that is, clock time passing. It is this beautiful gift of splendor. Can you think of a time when you have had that sort of euphoric connection, completeness, wholeness? Can you recapture that? Reach into the full sensory experience of it. You've got it. That holy shift, the deep breath, filling, renewing. What shifts might you name? in your awareness, practices, attitudes these past few months. An interesting awareness that I found during these recent months is that my music of choice while working has moved from my usual praise and worship to instrumental, quiet, meditative pieces. Sometimes the quiet of hymns, sometimes pieces with no lyrics no word at all, somehow restoring, stabilizing, healing kind of connecting. I can't quite put it in words as much as I can feel it and breathe it, sometimes at the edges of tears, sometimes at the edges 
drifting into that mellow place of being. Cliff has not felt called to his music, perhaps because he can't play with his friends, perhaps, perhaps because of the lure of creation, of being in the earth, literally immersed in nature, that deep rooting connection is more restorative at this time. What takes you to the kind of indwelling that Jesus is speaking about today? Jesus' prayer is the music. It's the earth connection. It is whatever gives you the beyond words kind of intersection of mind, body, and spirit. Breathe deep. Let us just be immersed in the grace of this moment. The chaos of this world will still be there, but we will be stronger, more adventuresome, and equipped for the next part of life's journey if we savor the spiritual nourishing. See it, feel it, hear it, touch it, taste it, it fuels our being. In this passage, Jesus' prayer could be described as a communion with God. John doesn't use kingdom of God language that's found in other gospels. And the gospel writer is clear that Jesus has come to offer eternal life. It's like a parallel with thy kingdom come in Jesus' expression of the hour has come for Jesus to fulfill the word of God. Jesus is committed to this. Kate Matthews reminds us this prayer is very different from that of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, as Mark tells the story of this same last night in his gospel writing. Louis Malcolm contrasts this, the grieved Jesus, who wouldn't mind passing the cup on the one he was about to drink, with this Jesus in the Gospel of John, portrayed as sitting with his friends, sitting at table, speaking of glory that he shares with God the Father from the beginning of time. In the Gospel of John, the focus is not the pending death experience of Jesus, as found in Mark, but it's already in the context of Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. Jesus had come from God and was returning to God. Using language from our earlier focuses on the Gospel of John 14, that God was in Jesus and Jesus was in God. In this part of the prayer, Jesus reinforces that the disciples belong to God. As disciples, we belong to God. In the translation we read, Eugene Peterson uses language to indicate that Jesus is on display in and through us. It is part of the belonging to God, the tapestry of who we are. It is shared with Jesus. Can we savor God's presence? Live boldly, love loudly serve faithfully. It really is about having our hearts, ourselves broken open to God. We need to hear in this prayer and in the long discussions that night with his disciples, as we observe and participate ourselves, that move us through the angst and the frustration. The disciples were not getting it. They didn't understand Jesus to repeating that he is the way, the way of abiding love to Jesus' promise of never orphaning, 
that the advocate, the comforter, the spirit will come alongside and never abandon. And in this prayer, Jesus is sharing above all how much he, that is Jesus, loves the disciples. Jesus is praying that prayer for us as we are Jesus' disciples today. We know we are not alone. We are not abandoned. We are loved. When we get down on ourselves, we do well to remember this farewell discourse that revealed the complexities of difficult conversations, hurt, pain, betrayal, but the deepest abiding, enduring forever love that is ours, God in and through us, that if we notice, we find God and we transmit we display God in and through us, one heart and one mind. Our moderator, Richard Bott, lifted up the idea of our discipleship as being embedded in the acronym UNITED, living into six spiritual practices or pathways, healing and growth. We are needing to help in the growth and healing of others in all of God's creation. You, uplifted by God's love. N, nurtured through worship. I, inspired through scripture. T, transformed through prayer. E, empowered through spiritual friendships. D, developed through service. How might we reflect on these six practices of united as we move into this summer season? Uplifted by God is foundational to the rest. We live in a world whose constant message is you need to be more. So you should have more. Jesus' message about God's love is countercultural. You are loved by God. That is enough and more than enough. Not only are you loved by God, your neighbor is loved by God in the same way. Love God with all that you are. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. We live in a world that compels us to compare ourselves with other people and their lives. And the problem with comparing ourselves with someone else is that we're either elevating ourselves on top or above them and putting them below us or finding ourselves wanting because they are better, stronger, faster, prettier, younger, older, richer, etc., etc., whatever those comparisons might be. The comparison can either subtly or overtly cause us to think less of one another, of one of God's beloved. So learning to truly love ourselves and truly love our neighbors as we truly love God is at the heart of being a disciple of Jesus. This pandemic time brings us together in ways that we can understand, discern, and know more about ourselves, each other, perhaps experience simpler times by staying at home and really experiencing that we are in this together. We are united. We are in Jesus and Jesus is in us. We are in God and God is in us. We are one heart and one mind, beloved children of God.
Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, there is so much in this world, in our lives, that cause us wonder and amazement. The stars that shine at night, the glorious sunrise and sunset, the miracle of creation, being reborn, renewed, refreshing and rejuvenating us, the smile of a friend or dear one, a moment to pause and to be, the gift of laughter and sharing with others, the way a song, a thought, a memory can provide new hope and fresh perspective. We give you thanks. Help us feel the wonder of creation. The gifts of each moment strengthen us in love. May we pause in the awe of this world and all its creatures. Loving God, there is also so much pain in this world, so much that we need your help to bear and to get through. Empower us to do our part to bring hope and healing, restoration, renewal, and abundant possibilities. Open us to listen and to respond to learn and to be justice seekers. We share many joys and concerns. Receive our prayers as we name them in our hearts and on our lips. We seek, O oh God, to make ourselves, our communities, our world more whole. These and all our prayers we bring to you, saying together the words Jesus prayed with his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God, go now in peace. Go forth as love bearers to a hurting world. As you go into the world, disciples of Jesus, live the love you have been given. Make a difference in every moment with lives that are uplifted by God's love. Nurtured through worship, inspired through scripture, transformed through prayer, empowered through spiritual friendships, developed through service. And as you go, remember, we never go alone. We are not alone. We will be okay. We are getting through this together. Until next time, stay home as much as you can. Save lives, stay safe, and stay well. God bless you. Amen.